After being expelled from their territory, a group of cavemen challenge the best athletes in the Colosseum to a soccer match for their freedom. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Early Man, from 2018. In Earth's prehistory, humans fight over food when the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs falls to Earth, sweeping everyone away. After getting up, the primitive humans approach the crater and find a space soccer ball right in the center. Despite not knowing what to do with the object at first, the first men soon discovered soccer and became great players, setting up goals with super heavy rocks. While some played, others created paintings on the rocks to depict the sport, leaving a record for future generations. A few ages later, a young Neanderthal called Doug is trying to catch some fruit with the help of his pet, Hognob. Suddenly, the young man hears the sound of a mammoth nearby and goes to Bobner, the chief of the tribe, to wake him up. After everyone gets up, Doug takes advantage of the fact that Bobner is shaving to try to convince him to hunt the mammoths, saying that the rabbits they usually hunt are too small to feed the whole group. When he hears this, Bobner says that mammoths weigh more than five tons and that they wouldn't be able to hunt anything like that, saying that their ancestors had been hunting rabbits since ancient times. To prove it, the leader of the tribe shows the cave paintings of the first soccer matches, claiming that they depict the hunting of some round beast. Bobner then says he'll think about the mammoths and starts handing out spears to everyone, making the final preparations before searching for food in the valley. Taking advantage of Hognob's nose, the group manages to spot a small rabbit and goes after it, cornering it so that it doesn't enter the burrow. Despite this, none of the Neanderthals are very skilled at hunting and the rabbit is only captured because it ends up crashing into a rock. With the success of the hunt, Bobner shows Doug how happy the tribe is to capture a rabbit and the young man agrees, but again says that the animal has too little meat to feed everyone. Suddenly, Hognob hears something approaching and starts barking at the forest, which makes everyone stop celebrating. Apprehensive, Bobner picks up a rock and throws it into the trees, resulting in a noise of metal that they have never heard before. Frightened, the leader of the tribe picks up a club to defend himself and ends up being disarmed by a gigantic arrow. To strike back, Doug throws his spear, which hits the bronze helmet of a mammoth that is simply colossal. Mounted on the animal, soldiers fire arrows and use wrecking balls to destroy the cavemen's camp, leaving them with no option but to flee. With the valley being taken over, Bobner starts running away and orders everyone to go to the barren lands, but Hognob gets trapped against a mammoth and Doug has to stay behind to save him, hiding behind a bush to be safe. Thinking that everyone was gone, Lord Newth climbed down from his mammoth and began to check the surrounding rocks, finding a large amount of inlaid bronze. Now that he knows about the presence of the metal, the Lord asks his men to surround the valley and start mining. Upon hearing this, an officer asks about the primitives and Newth says that they are all failures who haven't yet left the chipped stone age. In a rage, Doug picks up an axe and jumps at the nobleman, but is accidentally knocked out by the wrecking ball of one of the mammoths and falls into a cart, being taken inside the walls of civilization. Back in the city, the caveman wakes up and tries to run back to the valley, but falls off the wagon and can't get up before the wall closes in. With guards everywhere, Doug starts walking through the city when he bumps into the bronze pots of a shopkeeper called Guna, furious, the woman asks him to be careful and asks where he came from, but before Doug can answer, two Empire officials appear and summon everyone into the Colosseum. Following the crowd, the caveman passes through the entrance to the amphitheater without paying for the ticket, which causes him to be hunted down by the guards. During the escape, Doug manages to lose the soldiers and starts looking for the exit, but ends up in the locker room instead. To disguise himself, the Neanderthal steals some clothes and starts walking towards the exit, but is met by the players of the real Bronzio, the Empire's soccer team, who show up saying that it's already game time. Unbeknownst to Doug, he has stolen the goalkeeper's uniform and will now have to play with it. On the field, the two teams go to the center and start the match while Doug looks for the exit. After some time searching, the young man finally manages to find the entrance to the changing room, but the other players notice him trying to get out and force him to go for goal. With no experience, the youngster picks up the ball with his hands and runs to the middle of the pitch, which ends up giving the opposing team a free kick. When he shoots, the striker accidentally hits Doug's helmet, knocking him down and causing the ball to rise. As he looks up, the Neanderthal sees the sphere spinning and automatically remembers the rock paintings he saw in the valley, realizing that they didn't depict a hunt but a soccer match. Wanting to do as his ancestors did, Doug gets hold of the ball and kicks it towards goal, but as he's the goalkeeper, he ends up scoring an own goal, leaving the crowd outraged. In a rage, Jurgand, the real Bronzio captain goes to ask what Doug is doing and is interrupted by the real goalkeeper who finally appears. When he removes the imposter's helmet, Jurgand shows everyone that he is a caveman and Lord Newth is furious, saying that primitive people could never play soccer. 
Then the nobleman asks why he is stepping on his sacred ground and Doug replies that it was the Lord who invaded the valley first. The Lord then says that his species has no land and that they should all be extinct by now, ordering his men to take him out and take his life. While being carried by the soldiers, Doug decides to rebel against the nobleman and punctures the ball, challenging the real Bronzio to a game of soccer. If he wins, Doug says that his people will keep the valley and that Nuth should leave his tribe alone. Confident of victory, the nobleman accepts the challenge, but says that if he loses, Doug and his group will become his servants and spend the rest of their lives working in the mines of the valley. With the big match set, the Neanderthal goes to the arid lands and explains to everyone about soccer, telling them that they will get the valley back if they beat the Emperor's team. Bobner says he has no chance of winning and says they've never played this before, but Doug says his ancestors were great players and tells him the truth about the cave paintings. Although the chief is against the idea, everyone else is excited and Bobner is forced to allow them to play. Even though he doesn't know much about the game, Doug sets up a soccer field with dinosaur bones and starts teaching his tribe the basic rules. As they are starting from scratch, none of them has any knowledge of how the game works and Doug has to explain the most basic things about soccer. Upon learning the objectives of the game, one of the women in the cave asks to play and punches Doug to prevent him from getting the ball. After Bobner helps him up, the young man explains that this would be a foul and that they should focus on the ball, using only their feet to play. Even so, none of them have much motor coordination and end up kicking the soccer ball into the valley. In the Colosseum, Lord Newth sees his athletes training and gets excited thinking about the money people will pay to see the game. While the man is talking to his assistant, a carrier pigeon arrives to reproduce Queen Ufefa's message, showing the monarch's dissatisfaction with the soccer match. Angrily, the woman says that losing to a bunch of cavemen will be the greatest humiliation in the history of the nation and promises that she will make him regret it if that happens. Despite the message, the Lord knows that his players are professionals and doesn't seem too worried about Doug's team winning. In the arid lands, the Neanderthal young man is training his tribe to become a good team when they are attacked by a gigantic duck that starts chasing them. During the escape, no one bothers to pick up the ball which ends up being crushed by the duck, leaving them with no way to continue training. Without the object, Doug loses hope of winning the competition and becomes very discouraged, forcing Bobner to try and motivate him. After the conversation, the young man begins to think of a solution to his problems and comes up with the idea of going to the Empire to get some spare balls. Together with Hognob, Doug passes through the city walls and breaks into the Colosseum through an open window. There, the young Neanderthal asks the pig to wait in a room and starts walking towards the warehouse, but ends up slipping on a sign and falls through the bleachers. While he's rolling, Lord Nuth hears the noise and thinks it's his masseur, saying he needs to relax and asking the half-dog half-pig to come into the bathroom. Even though he knows nothing about massage, Hognob goes to the nobleman and stands behind the Lord trying to distract him. After the bleachers collapse, Doug catches Guna playing alone on the pitch and decides to watch, discovering how skilled she is. Realizing she's being watched, the girl hits a ball at the caveman and asks what he's doing, being surprised to discover that the young man has invaded an empire just to get some balls. Although she thinks it's stupid, Guna offers to help and guides Doug to the place where the balls are kept. When he arrives at the venue, the girl tells him that he is lucky and would do anything to have the chance to play in the Colosseum, but that because she is a woman, she would never get the chance. As soon as Guna finishes venting, they are caught by one of the Empire's officers and run onto the soccer field trying to escape. There, the two are cornered and Guna kicks soccer balls at the guards, knocking them out one after the other. Seeing the girl's level of skill, Doug tells her that she can help the tribe and rushes to the Lord's chambers to rescue the Hognob, jumping out of the Colosseum window and running back to the barren lands. When he gets home, Doug wakes up the rest of the tribe and introduces Guna to everyone, saying that she will be part of the team. Excited to start training, the girl asks what formation they're going to use and several other questions about positioning and marking. Realizing that none of them have a clue what she's talking about, Guna tells them that they're not going to win the real bronze by just chasing the ball and takes on the role of coach, introducing each of the enemy players and their strengths. Frightened by their opponent's level of skill, the tribe come to the conclusion that they won't be able to win and are discouraged, but Guna tells them that their rivals don't play like a real team and that everyone thinks they're the star of the field, making them very vulnerable to team play. Guna then begins the physical preparation of the Neanderthals and teaches them to work as a team, as well as defining a formation and final strategies. With the day of the match almost upon us, Lord Newth discovers through cave paintings that Neanderthals played soccer long before their civilization, which leaves him totally frightened. While he's thinking about what to do, two miners enter the room and tell him that they've discovered more paintings at the bottom of the mine, which for some reason gets the man excited. 
In the arid lands, the team of Neanderthals finally gets their strategies right and Guna is confident that they can win. While they are practicing, one of them throws the ball near the entrance to the valley and Doug offers to pick it up. As soon as he gets away from the others, the young man is captured by some soldiers who take him to the entrance of the mine. There, Lord Newth says he wants to introduce him to the place where he will work for the rest of his life and takes him deep into the mine, showing him the new paintings his men have found. Now that he has access to the entire history of his people, Doug discovers that his ancestors invented soccer and taught other tribes how to play, but were soon overtaken by their rivals and went on to lose every game. With no hope of winning again, Doug's people accepted that they were losers and gave up soccer for good. After the revelation, Lord Newth says that he is willing to make an offer and that he can still save his tribe from working in the mines. To prevent his friends from suffering this fate, Doug decides to accept the Lord's deal and tells Hognob about his plans, rushing into town to surrender. In the stadium, Lord Newth is waiting for the game to start when Queen Ufifa shows up in person to watch the match. When he sees the monarch, the nobleman tries to hide his chest of coins and goes to greet her, but the woman doesn't fall for his sympathy and tells him that she has come personally to determine the Lord's future. Now that the queen is in the stadium, Newth says they can start the game and calls the team of men from the cave to enter the field, but only Doug shows up. Meanwhile, Hognob takes Bobner to the mine and shows him the paintings that Lord Newth has discovered, convincing the chief to take the whole tribe to help Doug. Thinking he has no chance of winning, the young man gives up the game and volunteers to work in the mines alone, as well as saying in front of everyone that Lord Noth can have the valley. Just then, the other cavemen arrive, mounted on that giant duck, who drops a poo bomb on Newth. After landing, the rest of the tribe enters the field and Bobner tells Doug that he shouldn't be swayed by old paintings, motivating him to fight for the valley again. Doug then challenges the real Bronzio team and the organizers start the timer, kicking off the competition. Right from the off, the cavemen managed to surprise their rivals and stole the ball, passing it around until they reached the penalty area. Reading the newspaper, the enemy goalkeeper doesn't see the play coming and ends up conceding the first goal, putting him at an early disadvantage against the Stone Age team. Now that they have seen what their opponents are capable of, the professional players are more attentive and are able to react with ease, with Jurgen taking the ball into the box on his own and scoring the equalizer. After the puppet replay, the referee blew the whistle and once again Jurgen went on the offensive, scoring the winning goal. As if that wasn't enough, the professional team continued to attack and managed to score a third goal before the break, completely dominating the match. Happy with her team's victory, Queen Ufefa blows Vuvuzelas while Lord Newth taunts the opposing team, saying that they will work in the mine. Even though they're losing, Doug doesn't fall for the taunt and manages to motivate his team, saying that they'll return to the valley after the match. When the second half begins, one of the players from the team of Neanderthals remembers the training session and manages to disarm the enemy team, taking the ball into the box and finishing with an unconventional header. After conceding the second goal, the real Bronzio started to fall apart and Jurgen got into a fight with his teammates, making it even easier for the cavemen to turn the game around. Taking advantage of the crisis in the enemy team, the Neanderthals exchange passes until they reach the goalkeeper. Alone in the box, Guna curled in a beautiful shot and scored the equalizer for her team, making Lord Newth very angry. Knowing that he will be deposed if he loses, the politician goes to the real Bronzio and orders them to do something, promising to leave them hanging in the Colosseum until the end of the year if they lose. To ensure victory, the nobleman knocks out the referee and steals his uniform, taking his place on the pitch. When he learns that Newth will be refereeing the match, Doug says that this isn't fair and the Lord replies that his opinion doesn't matter, taking advantage of his authority to stay on the pitch. As no one can stop him, the new referee goes to the real Bronzio and says it's time for the real game to begin, encouraging them to beat up the opposing team. Despite the aggressions, the referee doesn't whistle any fouls and accuses the opposing team of trying to draw fouls, which makes the crowd boo his attitude. Even so, the match continues as normal and one of the players from the real Bronzio takes a shot with such force that it knocks Bobner against the post, breaking the bar in two and making the goalkeeper faint. Even so, the referee doesn't stop the game and Jurgen runs at full speed to score. To prevent this from happening, Doug gets to the ball first and hits a clean tackle that takes the ball out of the box. Taking advantage of the situation, Jurgen pretends to have been hit and the Lord obviously awards his team a penalty. Furious, Guna says it wasn't a foul and Newth replies that they can check on the prehistoric VAR, which is completely tampered with, and confirms the penalty. As well as conceding a maximum penalty when they're level, Bobner is now injured and the Stone Age team no longer has a goalkeeper. With no other player to replace him, Doug decides to give a chance to Hognob, who is already in uniform. 
Underestimating his opponent, Jurgen takes his distance and runs at the ball. Despite the striker's fine shot, Hognob managed to prevent the goal and the ball hit the crossbar, rising inside the penalty area. Wanting to score the winning goal, everyone on the Imperial team jumps on the ball at the same time to head it in, but Doug refuses to stand by and watch and asks for his team's help to jump even higher than the professionals. In midair, the young man hits a bicycle kick with such force that the ball burns due to the friction with the air, pushing the goalkeeper all the way into the net. With the score at 4-3, the real referee appeared and blew the final whistle, awarding victory to the Stone Age team. After the victory, Ufefa goes to the middle of the field and congratulates the cavemen, stepping away from the chest with the ticket money and allowing Nuth to take the nickel. To stop him running away, Guna hits the nobleman in the rat costume in the head and Doug does the same, knocking him off the stand. Before he hits the ground, the giant duck grabs the man with his beak and starts shaking him from side to side, causing the coins to fall into the crowd. While the duck is waddling, Nuth falls in front of the guards and ends up being arrested and taken to work in the bronze mines. With that settled, Ufefa hands Doug the trophy and tells him he can go back to the valley, making the cavemen's victory official and re-establishing their territory. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.